uh, experiment. This is insanity to create trillions of dollars and pump up assets way more than they're worth, suck everybody into them. Everybody thinks you can't lose money on stocks, can't lose money on real estate. The Federal Reserve won't let them go down. When this thing goes down, people are going to lose money rapidly. I remind people that when the tech bubble burst, 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 now it took almost three years for that bubble to burst for, uh, fully, 80%. The first 40% happened in the first two and a half months. If you don't get out of this and protect yourself ahead of time, it will be too late. That's what, and again, that's what the smart money is doing. Most people will never see this coming. So there's no more important time to understand what's happening. The real economy has been unfavorable since late 2007 because of demographics. We predicted that would happen 20 years ago and predicted it would happen before it happened in Japan. They were the first to go down. Europe is next including Germany. So the fundamentals are bad. We had the greatest debt bubble in history. Debt grew at 2.6 times GDP for 25 years from 1983 to 2008. Any economist that doesn't think that's a problem in a crisis brewing, we've never had debt grow that sure. fast that long. Harry so, Dent so is our guest. Uh, Harry, let me ask you this question. Obviously, the elites are digging in with the police state. They think it's going to protect them. But if you've got people in the depression starving to death when they were somewhat self-sufficient what's going to happen today with this entitlement society by the middle class by the elites by the 100 million people that are on food assistance in the u.s 101 million it seems like a perfect storm once this all unravels a b central banks have been caught it's in the news they're going to be meeting in a few weeks secretly in london to push to ban cash worldwide they've already been pushing it openly so so those two points how bad will it get? I mean, I know it's a, on average. I know it, there's a hundred ways this can happen. But how does the decadence, the, the entitlement, uh, the, the, the whole uh, just-in-time-to-market uh, fragility of the system affect it? And then how does that tie in uh, to the other points that I was bringing up? Well, you know, uh, you know, this is going to be a global crisis because it's a global bubble, stocks everywhere, real estate everywhere. And it's when real estate crashes that you get the worst problems because real estate is financed and now heavily, often with no money down, by mortgages. So it's heavily levered. So that's why this, the, the, the last downturn was so bad because real estate crashed. But real estate is yet to crash in most cities around the world. So that's going to be the first reality. It's not just stocks that go down. People don't get hit as hard when stocks go down. Real estate goes down, the banking system gets hit, people are underwater, they can't refinance. Now, the, the two areas I'm most worried about, because we've already seen Europe go through part of this crisis and Japan now for decades. Those are very civil places with, with, with older populations and, and not as much kind of crime and violence. I worry about the United States because we have a very polarized society. The rich have been getting richer, the poor have been getting poorer. Like you said, you got all these entitlements built up. The top 0.1% controls massive amounts of wealth. Um, and, and so I think there's going to be that polarized situation is going to lead to some level of civil unrest. And then, of course, I'm most worried about China for those 250 million people with no skills who are going to have to squat in an unfinished apartment and can't even move back to their rice paddies sure. because they've been saved over with nothing. They're, they're going to be trapped. And, and, and so so... I do think people have to worry, not just protect your investment, where you live, you want to live farther out rather than farther in. You want to live between the Allegheny Mountains and the Rocky Mountains and not on the coast if you can. I, I think we are going to see some level of civil unrest, uh, even though people can argue, oh, Japan's been through this for two and a half decades and they haven't seen civil unrest. Well, they're an older society. They got yeah, no well, The Japanese didn't, didn't rob each other when their country was all bombed to the ground. So they, they act better as when they're attacked instead of we act worse. Let's just be honest about it. We're going to break. I want to ask you this question. And you're right. The elites are moving off the coast into the middle of the country, into the Ozarks and stuff, and building redoubts. I mean, that's got to concern people, and billionaires are doing that across the board. But I want to ask you, the White House strategy, I know you're you know not political on these issues, but the White House and Soros and others really are trying to get a summer of rage, entitlement, class warfare going when they're some of the most entitled people out there. What's the strategy behind that with Mr. Dent straight ahead? You can get his book free except for $5, $4.95 shipping and handling. I don't want to give up too much info on air. But generally, if we have some intel privately, we can just go search it. 
and find it somewhere else in mainstream news or alternative news or in a C-SPAN statement or something. But the whole Carnegie Mellon family and their foundations have been moving into diversified uh, portfolios, into digital, uh, into a bunch of other things, into farmland, things like that. Uh, for quite a while and are predicting a massive crash by the end of next year. And then I was separately talking to a source about this, and we did a search, and Nico is in there printing it, because I'd forgotten to do this, and there's an article mentioning something in that area. So I, all I'm saying is the elite are acting like it's the end of the world. And then they have national news attacking us because we cover this, saying we're insane, nothing's going to happen, everything's fine. Uh, man, I, I would love to be wrong, but see, I'm not wrong. I'm going off... What the big money is doing uh and there's even an article the future of money uh bny Mellon, the next generation of currency they're pushing there's going to be a collapse go to digital uh again they're global str out of the crisis and they've got the big banks openly meeting and pushing and making statements about banning cash what's up with the war on cash and how is the different arms of the establishment harry dent going to try to ride this crisis into more power well, you know, everybody wants to keep this bubble. Again, it's been created for decades now. They want to keep it going. You can't keep a bubble going forever. This is an impossible task, but people will do desperate things, like the government just keeps printing more money. Well, every time they have to up the ante, they have to do double and then triple. And that's what the Japanese have been doing, and now the Europeans. And so all of this stuff is strategies that just try to keep this going at least until the next administration or the next group gets in. Nobody wants to have the next Great Depression on their watch. And I mean, you can't blame people for that. But that's why nobody's telling you the truth. And everybody just hopes we can keep this thing going. You cannot keep this thing going. Well, well answer my question. I mean, I mean, I know you like to go off scientific stuff and graphs and facts, and you make accurate predictions. But you're a smart guy separately from that. They're clearly activating leftist goon mobs, communist race baiters for riots. Why would the White House, Justice Department, and George Soros want to play with fire like that? What is the strategy there? You know, I don't know about Soros, but but any anybody in the political establishment will do what it takes to to you know benefit them, especially in a difficult situation. So I mean, I don't get like you said on on the political side as much because as soon as I get too political, I, I alienate half the people. So and I just say, look, I can tell you what's going to happen over the rest of your lifetime today. Our four cycles will show you where the economy's headed over the rest of your lifetime, your kid's lifetime, for your business, everything. So why wouldn't you want to know that? These are, are objective indicators that make sense. Track but undoubtedly, whether it's this year or next year, all hell's getting ready to break loose. Yeah, our show in the short term we show that the danger period is, is 2015 and 16, and then again in 2018 and 19. Those are probably the most dangerous years ahead. And I think the worst are likely to be in the next two. So I would agree with that report earlier that by the end of 2016, we're likely to see something major occur. So you, you can't afford to wait here and say, well, I'll wait and see, and then I'll prepare. Now, you better prepare now. Absolutely. Well, folks, you can get a free copy of your best-selling book. I appreciate you doing that at harrydentbook.com. Uh, in closing uh, here, uh, just in 30 seconds, what are you doing to protect your money? Uh, basically, the best thing to do is to be in cash. I also buy options where I can say I'm willing to lose this amount of money, but I'm going to make 10 times my money. When the markets have been going up this much with little volatility, you can buy, if you sit, talk to a professional, you can buy... I tell you what, can you do five more minutes on what you're doing? One yeah, minute sure. break. Okay, we'll do a one minute break. Go into overdrive, infowars.com forward slash show. Uh, thanks to all the affiliates out there. All right, final segment, Overdrive. Harry Dent is here with us, harrydentbook.com to get a free copy. Only four ninety five. that pays for the shipping and handling. And then he loses money because they had to print the book. So that's, he's losing probably $5. He says it's a buy from the publisher. Probably like $10 he's losing. But he wants you to read the book. It's so important. And it's about as accurate as you're going to get following demographics. It's what the elite do. They all know this. So we're talking about something that, that he's helped, you know, codify. So he has trailblazed. But quite frankly, I read globalist reports, Pentagon reports, stuff that Carol Quigley wrote, you know, in the 60s. And they talk about all this, things that Brzezinski wrote. And the four minutes we have left, sir, uh, you're saying basically gambling off knowledge you have on the market on specific things with money you can lose 
is one of the most successful things you could do. But most people don't know how to do that. So what else? What would you say to, I mean, not individual uh, advice, but what would you advise just in general terms for the general public? It, you know, there's a couple areas, you know, in a boom, you sit there and you sit down with a financial advisor and say, okay, how do I diversify and, and play the upside? Well, the downside is just the opposite. And, and, but, and, and it gets more narrow. There's fewer things will do well. I tell people, number one thing most people should be doing is just get more of their real estate and stocks and financial assets in cash. Cash preserves the value after a bubble. And then when everything crashes, you can buy stuff at 10, 20, 30 cents on the dollar. So that's number one, just cash and very safe short-term bond. Number two, we've been saying this for years, the dollar benefits from the deleveraging of all this debt. There are going to be a lot of dollars and debts and dollars are going to be destroyed and have been. The dollar is going to go up, not the euro, not the Swiss franc, not every other currency. Now, the dollar has been going down lately, so we're looking for another opportunity for people to bet on the U.S. dollar going up. There's an ETF called UUP. It follows the U.S. dollar. Third, to some minor amount, because people shouldn't be speculating, some percentage of your portfolio, 10 20%, you can use to just basically bet on stocks going down. You can buy an inverse ETF, like SH goes the opposite of the S&P 500. So if stocks go down, and remember what I said earlier, stocks go down at least twice as fast as they go up even in a bubble, then you make some money on a small amount of portfolio. And if you're really sophisticated, you can set up options or futures and things where you risk a little amount of money and it's what, what some people call asymmetric returns. As I said earlier, it's, stocks have been going up with so little volatility, you can buy some of these futures and options sort of things with a little money very cheaply and only put a little money at risk. But again, you should do that as an entire strategy and sit down with somebody who knows what they're doing. You shouldn't just run off this show and say, oh, I'm going to go sure. buy an option. That'd be absurd. But bottom line, if you can accrue cash and liquid assets, yeah. when the depression hits, you can then, at the bottom of the depression, buy real estate, buy companies, buy valuable things, and be yeah. really successful on the other end. In fact, that's how a lot of the biggest fortunes have been made. Yeah, Joseph Kennedy was a great example in the early 30s. And here's the point, Alex. You have to have cash or something producing cash flow. Nobody's going to lend you money when the world looks like it's going down the tubes. So it's the people who have cash and liquid assets that can walk in to situations that are failing and literally say a business like buy your competitor out at 10 cents on the dollar, 20 cents on the dollar, buy stocks at the bottom of the Great Depression, stocks, blue chip stocks were down 89 percent. Imagine buying great long term companies that rate. So that's the real I like the cash thing because you sleep at night. You're not taking any risk. You wait for things to fall apart. Then sure. you start buying what stuff. about the bail in, though? More and more, they're trying to launch this thing now in Greece. They're talking about federalizing pension funds to, quote, protect them. How do you keep them from pirating your cash in the future? Yeah, well, don't have it sitting in a, in a normal commercial bank account or deposit account. You have your money, even if it's in safe cash-like investments or money markets or CDs or whatever, you have it in an investment account under your name. That's not something a bank can lend against. It's not like something like in Cyprus or Greece where, where banks or governments can come in and say, oh, we're just going to take 10% uh, of all deposits of people yeah, over. Really good advice. I don't have a lot of assets, but to back up this company in operation, I have some reserves that do exactly what you're saying. And that's when you buy is when markets are down. You don't buy when they're up. But, but uh, folks don't listen to that for whatever reason. Mr. Dent, thank you so much. Look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Okay, thank you, Alex. Yeah, his predictions are coming true, ladies and gentlemen. So congratulations on that. Uh, HarryDentBook.com. I'm Alex Jones with InfoWars.com.